dry paint quickly and economically with a reptile heating mat? Bob Johnson with PK and W Model Works coming at you with another video. This time about how to dry paint faster. Look, we all don't want to wait around for paint to dry so we can get on with the next step of our project. Micromark sells Dr. Dry Booth, the smallest and cheapest model of which costs 170 bucks right now on sale. I'll put a link to that in the description below. And this looks like a really slick professional unit and it's not that expensive but I really didn't want to add another piece of equipment to my workshop when I'll be moving in a few months. So I decided to find a cheap way to do this because I have to dry things out in the garage and it's kind of cool out there. I did some research on the internet and here are the four factors I found that are necessary to help accelerate the drying of paint. The first is drying the paint in a warm environment after your application. The second is having air moving over the surface of the paint. The third is using warm paint in the first place. And the fourth is having a warm target. Now a reptile heating pad can solve three of those problems for you. Here's what I bought. This is a, the heating pad as well, uh, the heating mat, as well as a thermostat and a temperature probe to use in the reptile enclosure. The thermostat and the probe looks like this. You don't need them. I thought the uh, thermostat might be necessary to reach maximum uh, temperature on the mat, uh, or you might need to turn it down because the mat got too hot for drying paint uh, on plastic. Not true. The mat alone just plugs straight into the wall and it only heats up to roughly 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 43 degrees Celsius, which is the ideal temperature for drying paint on plastic models, according to Micromark. So you don't need that. So you don't have to spend the 40 or so bucks that I spent to get the whole set. You only need to spend $18 to get the mat. And I will put a link to that on Amazon in the description of the video below. So here is how I assembled my drying booth, paint drying booth, and it really couldn't be simpler. I'm just taking an ordinary Lowe's moving box. It's nice that it has this uh, hole for the, uh, to carry the box because you can run your power cord through there. Just taking my reptile Matt, dropping it in the bottom of the box. I lead my power cord out the handhole here. And then I'm putting in place one of these simple drying racks, uh, cooling racks from the kitchen. Do not raid your kitchen. I am not authorizing you to raid the kitchen and take this from the cook in the house. This is why you go to estate sales. You can probably get something like this for 25 cents at an estate sale. And anybody who's um, making a home with you will probably be glad to go along to a few estate sales and you can get all kinds of things, uh, including a rack like this. Uh, one that you might be willing to cut down to fit into a box. So then I'm just dropping this down into the box over the heating pad to allow the item to sit a little bit above the pad. And now it's probably not going to get as warm, even though it's sitting maybe half an inch above the pad. But uh, depending upon how many surfaces are painted, you may not be able to put it directly on the pad. And this would also allow a little bit of air to circulate around, around the entire item. If you've painted multiple surfaces, it might help drying a little bit. Uh, but I don't think it's absolutely necessary. And that's it. All I do is close it up to keep some of the heat inside and makeshift paint drying booth. Now my test I did in my garage here in the winter in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's bitterly cold outside. It was roughly 50 degrees or 10 degrees Celsius inside the garage. Here's a reading taken off the side of my wife's car. Now here's the uh, drying booth set up in the garage and you can see the temperature reading on the item I'm drying which is a wooden display base 
is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. After an hour, here's the reading, and it had increased to 82 degrees. After two hours, it was still at 82 degrees. I then took out the baking cooling rack and put the display base directly on the heating mat. And you can see here the reading in that condition was 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is nice and warm. And honestly, after three or four hours in there, it was, pretty, it was dry to the touch, and I was very happy with that. I also had a, a gun carriage, a wooden gun carriage that I painted with oil paints. And those oil paints were taking days and days to dry. And I dropped that carriage in there with the display base for four or five hours, and it was finally dry. So I was very happy with the results. And let's face it, even in the spring, the fall, even the summer possibly, your garage is not going to be at 90 degrees or 32 degrees uh, Celsius, 92 degrees Fahrenheit, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So using the heat mat, even in the summertime, may make sense for you and may accelerate the drying process. And of course, that drying will be occurring inside a box that you can ensure is a dust-free environment. So how does using a reptile heat mat solve for three of the four factors in accelerating paint drying? Well, before you start painting, plug in your heat mat. Warm up your paint and your target on the mat prior to use. Again, even in the summer, it's gonna be cool. It's, it's gonna probably be an air-conditioned space where you may be working. And so uh, it's worthwhile to heat up your paint and your target in that way. Then, when you're done painting, use the heat mat to create a paint drying booth and you will have solved four, three of the four factors necessary to accelerate drying your paint faster. That's all I've got for you this time. This is Bob Johnson with PKNW Model Works signing off until next time. Keep on modeling.